It's me, Vera, here to remind you that this is an adult podcast. That means we're going to deal with tough topics. Take a break if you need it, and be kind to yourself, because we sure won't be. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Crack Crown Season 2 of Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Podcast. As always, I am your storyteller, Mike Martin, and today I am not joined by just a few, but every single one of the Crack Crown crew. Bop, 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 dot. Bob and dot together. (laughs) Yeah. You got (laughs) bot. You got, uh, let's go. Well, Josh Josh. and Jason are so close, (laughs) but Mosh is much better. Mosh. And then you got Jason. Hey, Jason. (laughs) Hi. Mosh. I've been known to be caught in a mosh. Ooh. I'm a, I'm a, I've never been in a mosh. I feel like I would break. Oh, come on, Matt, because it might do your soul some good. Yeah, but it might break my arm at the same time. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well. I'm afraid of pain. It's not to be trifled with. I'm not I I I you will not find me in any more moshes at this point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I'm pr- I'm past Mosh Prime already. It's too late. <laughs> Mosh Prime, a failed transformer. <laughs> <laughs> I want a design of Mosh Prime. Uh, all right. Yeah. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Uh, it's good to have you all back. And uh, thank you all listeners for coming back. If you guys have been uh, listening and want to support the show, obviously the best way to do so is by letting other people know we exist. Just listen to it, share it with friends who'd be interested in it. It's funny. Our, our editor shared it with his uh girlfriend's mom and his girlfriend and they both like love it now and went back and started listening to it from episode one which is awesome but uh yeah guys just sharing the show is great uh, if you want to go above and beyond you can head over to patreon.com slash pod by night where you can jump on one of the tiers get some of the bonuses jump into the community on a higher level you got some locked rooms on discord you got some after shows audio and video uh and the last thing you could do is actually just jump into the discord which is free for everybody minus a couple of rooms that are for patrons only and i think we should mention matt this that for the month of april we still have that special patreon uh tier at the ten dollars to come join all the shovel heads bub's been dropping some pretty sweet stuff on patreon and in the discord to tease y'all um with his sultry s- southern <laughs> cult voice um and uh yeah if that doesn't get you, I don't know what will. Yeah, what is it like? Pitch, pitch it, bub. Like, what is exactly like? Who is the character? What's the little audio treats you're giving people? What is it about? I know what it is, but other people. Well, it's 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 Pastor Julius. He finds his way into the hearts of many. From down south, he brings the sweetest and the most sultry. If he hasn't had you swooning so far, then find your way into the Shovelhead Incursion in Gary, Indiana. That was like a little mini episode of Old Gods of Appalachia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Let's just go ahead and set the scene, rein things in, and uh, see what our coterie is up to. The coterie spent the night was the basement Lyle had prepared for everybody within Chicago as you arrived on this evening. And it's in that very plain room with no windows. Uh, the thick concrete walls muting whatever cars may or may not be passing by and minimum furniture only that necessary to at least look like somebody occupies the space and isn't just totally empty and abandoned. Robert probably would have spent the night either in the ivory tower in a guest room within the ivory tower or you would have been put up in like a, a sunproof like vampire specific kind of hotel for the evening because by the time you got back from what you were doing the dawn was already kind of Getting pretty close, but you were taken care of. Sean, you probably made your way back that night, but it was really close to sun up, and everybody was probably going to sleep. As we rouse for this evening, everybody make me a rouse check, but Mark, you have aggravated damage. I sure do. The way you heal aggravated damage is first you make your rouse check to wake up, so go ahead and do that. All right, so you're fine on your first roll, Max. So to the way aggravated damage heals is... Every morning, you then have to roll three additional rouse checks, and that will heal you one aggravated damage. And then you do the same thing the next morning. You can't force heal it. It just kind of has to happen. All righty. So three more rouse checks. Three more rouse checks for Max. I know. It's a lot. Don't don't tangle with a lycanthrope, folks. That's that's my advice to you. Uh, And how many aggravated do you have left after that one heal? Uh, I, I only had two aggravated be- due to my, uh, flak jacket, which has been 
has been uh, really reduced in its efficiency after <laughs> Robert as well. Again, <clears throat> because you had a relation prior to even joining the coterie, Robert had a relationship with the Prince of Chicago. Um, people who are listening may, uh, may not know, but, uh, Robert was introduced in a live show that was, is that up there for people to listen to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can go listen to it then actually, but he has a relationship built with Jackson. So Jackson would provide you food. At no cost, completely free for you to. Uh, so feed then, can from. I? Yep, you can uh, feed. You can feed down to three, but you will need to make me a um, a hunger frenzy check because you're at four hunger. I'm resisting, and yep, you're fine. Nice. I've resisted. So you can feed down to one hunger, which is where you need where you should be. Uh, how's everybody else's hunger? Anybody over th- three or four? Duke, I think, was waiting on food. Oh, Sean, what did you? What would you have brought back for him? Oh, uh, well, he asked for clean blood. Yep. Uh, Sean has contacts in druggy circles, so I think the the cleanest you can find is someone with withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> Tainted blood. And that's probably what he brings back. Some disheveled person who's, like, been cold turkey for, like, a few weeks. Sean, you have basically two options. People, you, you can reach out to the people you know, or you can kidnap somebody off the street. Mm. You know if you kidnap somebody off the street, you could likely get clean blood, as long as you're, especially if you're going into, like, suburban areas but if you're going to your circle you know it's safer you're not really going to kidnap them you just promise them a really good night and they'll come with you then yeah i i promised someone in my in my circle sean the person you would approach you would have them come the following night because by the time you got back it was already really close to dawn Mm -hmm. so as everybody's rousing minus robert not being here and you were all again waking up in that plain concrete room there's not a knock no shuffle of stairs vera you're the first to notice Simply standing there, waiting, is Lyle. Wordlessly staring at you, Vera. What are you doing? He uh, <clears throat> simply is able to weasel out the words, waiting. Well, do the rest of the coterie a favor and wait somewhere else. They may be less welcome to your gaze. As he slowly turns to leave, he takes a first step up and he says, someone is uh." Someone's upstairs. And then he scurries up the stairs extremely quickly like a squirrel. Oh, I'm getting too old for this shit. As you stand up and make your way up the stairs, Sean, you likely know who this is. It's the individual you asked to show up here. Um, Please, Sean, who the floor is open. Who is this individual that you brought back? Uh, So I bring down the stairs a a kind of... uh, person who is wearing um tan everything basically it's dirty it's not particularly clean he's a little bit shaky uh he looks like he's pruned a bit from exposure um and 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 possibly age but you don't know which one happened first um and like so uh, yeah sean kind of leads him down one hand on his shoulder um and it's like don't worry. I know you're going through some really awful symptoms right now, but I, this is safe. It's clean and it'll, it'll stop some of those aching sensations that you've been having, you know? And you hear those, those words from Sean uh, coming down the stairs as he, as he, that this individual that he describes steps down and he looks around and there's a little bit of, uh, I wouldn't say confusion, maybe awe on his face is like, Whoa, man, I thought it was going to be like, Way more packed. No, 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 no. This is exclusive. Uh, the, uh, go ahead and make me a uh, a uh, manipulation persuasion, sir. For fans of taxidermy only. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's not a moment where he, he even double backs or questions. He's like, excellent. And just walks in. Do you walk him over to Duke? Yeah, I find a place where it's a bit more private for Duke to feed. Um, but yeah, I was about to say why Vera would leave. Sure. Okay. I'm not staying down here with this riffraff. Uh, ew. Um, I will go upstairs, uh, and greet the moonlight. So as our camera followed Sean down and there's that little conversation between the two of them that happens, it actually, uh, blur, uh, not blurs, but moves past and catches sight of Vera as she stands up and the look on her face says it all to those who are familiar with Vera in any way. And she strides by with speed. And as our camera trails her instead, It stops just for a moment as it lingers on somebody leaning against the wall as we watch Max 
rousing this evening as your wounds slowly crawl closer to being healed, the skin replacing what little scabs were there, but the ache and a pain that you only ever feel the last time you took aggravated damage could have been years at this point is it's nothing. It's true pain, true pain in a way that even as a mortal, you could never feel. And you still have a little bit of aggravated damage left. And as you stand up and around that kind of waking up for the evening, Adelaide kind of runs over and tries to help you up while Max Jr. is already on your shoulder, rubbing his bald face into your chin. Uh, the first thing you hear from Max is, Oh, Christ on a crutch. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that Christ on a crutch is the first words that you hear, Robert, as you walk into the building and you hear it from the basement where they are. You were dropped off. You were driven here by that individual mm. that you made sure drove you last ah, time. Yes. Remember after after he good. Yeah. <laughs> so as you walk in, you hear uh, you can see Vera uh, walking up the stairs and kind of coming into the room. And you actually see Robert walking in the front door, Vera. But before the interview, you can say anything again from downstairs that oh, Max shouting pain uh, kind of roars through. I look at Max and I say, Max, this is quite a picturesque view I'm seeing right now. It almost like a painting I once saw. Oh, yeah? Ugh. Ugh. What gallery was it in then, huh? <laughs> the whole room is has a look of confusion, I imagine, and Adelaide just, just kind of watching. Oh, you know, uh, here and there, various different places. Uh, maybe I was mistaken. Was it, uh, was it something by Hieronymus Bosch? Because that's exactly how I fucking feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that probably was it. You are sort of twisted in one of those strange shapes that he like to uh to paint you know i i i gave him inspiration there time and again oh yeah oh, listen uh, as he leans on adelaide he just looks over to her and says yep. kid yeah uh, never tangle with one of them lupines i'm gonna give you that advice for free right now she with consistent worry on her face just kind of nods yeah is there anything i can do please max can i yeah give me uh give me that cooler over here and she reaches over, you know, pulls over the cooler for you and pops it open. Imagine grab yourself a little Slurpee. Uh, yeah, he uh, grabs a blood bag and drains it. And then he, you know, it's packed with ice, I think. So he'll he'll actually take one of the full blood bags and just, you know, cartoon style, like Fred Flintstone would do with a raw steak. Just sort of like put it over his <laughs> eye and forehead. Like, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Duke, are you drinking in the midst of all this? Are you like stepping away to buy yourself some privacy and drink from this individual? Uh, I think it's probably privacy. He's going to yeah. find a spot to at least have a few words with him before he imbibes. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You probably want to either, uh, you could probably head upstairs as well. Then probably the easiest place to go as Max is rather wounded and moving any large amount seems to be a bit of an effort for him. Uh, has this person laid eyes on Max? Oh, yes. Yes. The, the individual who came down. Yes. But the way, um, the people Sean hang out with, uh, lots of costumes, sometimes lots of, uh, you know, raves, drugs can cause hallucinations. There doesn't seem to, he doesn't seem to skip a beat when he sees you. Okay, so Max is like, eh, somebody better put the whammy on that guy. We're gonna have a masquerade breach on our hands. Well, well, why don't we all go upstairs and give Duke and his business associate a moment of privacy? I just thought I was here for some drugs. Do not fret, weary fellow. I'm sure you will find your drugs before it's over with. Come on, and I'll help Max a little, you know, as well. Thanks, Vera. Is this like a? Like a Renfist kind of like drug thing? Yeah, yeah. That and sleep paralysis demons. We all get together. Uh, eventually, you all leave, leaving Duke alone with the individual. Um, and when the silence finally is uh, gifted to the basement with Duke and this individual, how uh, does Duke say anything? I think Duke is going to try to size him up just to see what it is. It's not that he distrusts Sean. He just wants to see with his own eyes what Sean has brought him back. How he responds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you want to make me a wits insight? Two successes. With two successes, the description Sean gives seems to be apt. The man does not seem to be in any sort of delirium or stoned. Uh, he doesn't seem stoned. He doesn't seem on any sort of... He's not intoxicated. He's, there's nothing running through his system that seems obvious at the moment, though he seems a little bit kind of out of sorts and not really fully aware of where he is, whether that's from decades of doing drugs or simply because he is uh, exhausted or Sean did something to him. Uh, it's hard to tell. You don't smell anything on his blood immediately as you draw a little closer, being able to take in 
the smell of this individual and uh, you know what the smell of alcohol on the blood is. You even know what the smell of, of marijuana in the system smells like. And while he may have it lingering on the outside, it's not coming from the source that draws you. I didn't quite catch your name. People call me Billy. Billy. Quaint. Billy. Sean said that you are a survivor and you have tussled with a handful of drugs. Am I here for like drugs or is this like a hit? What do you think you're here for? Drugs? What's your drug of choice? What you got? This and that. Heroin? Got any? Are you a junkie, Billy? Are you a cop? Oh man? No, no, I, I, I look that way. No, you can you can call me Duke. Because if you're a cop, you have to tell me. That's the law. It's okay, Billy. I'm I'm not a I'm not a cop. There's no police officer nearby. I, I would be informed as such. Yeah, like a joint on you at least? I just want to understand you a bit first, Billy. You're the weirdest drug dealer I've ever dealt with. I've been told that. Is this going to cost me extra? No. No, it will not. I just want to know what that's like. What you're feeling. Like I want drugs? Hey, it's hard to sleep, but you never... See, I'm recovering as well, Billy. I've this own feeling. Tell me if there are parallels of this dramatic... Amazing, even violent, craving, awful, raging, eating feeling inside of me. Should I leave? No, I, I think you should relax, Billy. I'm gonna compel him. Okay. Yep. As you as you compel him, and you like you should relax. He's just he goes from saying something to his shoulders slouch. Whatever he was said is leaves, and he's like, "Yeah, you're right. Things are a vibe, man. Just uh, you know, I have a hard time sleeping. Sometimes my skin burns. I get itchy. I get a little angry and violent. Luckily, I never dipped into the crack, but uh, I do miss those long, peaceful, blissful sleeps. Hopefully, I can help with that, Billy. If you would do me a favor and turn around, please. He shrugs and again under the uh, under compel does not second guess for a moment and turns. At times, I have these overwhelming sensations, this fantastic passion. It leaves me feeling physically, maybe emotionally impotent, but not quite physically. Billy, just relax for me. And Duke will step up behind and begin to feed. And when you tell him to relax again, you watch his shoulders almost like forcibly slouch further, uh, like he's trying to relax more under the command of compel. And as you sink your fangs into him, of course, his own conscious thoughts kind of veer away as he fades into the embrace of the kiss. Uh, you only need to feed down two points, right? Correct. So he's not going to be like on needing hospital levels of stuff, but he's going to have like a couple days of a real, real bad hangover. As your uh, teeth sink in, our camera blurs up to the first floor. And a few minutes are implied to have passed when we hear the door to the basement open and we see, I imagine, Duke walk out clean and entirely tidy, having left the gentleman probably on the couch downstairs or propped up against the wall uh, somewhere. Sean, he's going to need a means of walking out of here, and I think he's going to need to relax for a short time. That sounds like something Lyle could handle. Lyle. Lyle, who has his back towards all of you right now and is like in the corner and seemingly working on something, but Vera says Lyle and he spins around with instant uh, like reaction time, and he immediately starts making his way to the basement door without... Sean, just give him an address. Can do. And instructions not to kill him, right? Well, of course not. What do you think he is, a murderer? I'm not going to answer that. Good. And now, for the first time in a few nights, the entire coterie is actually together. Not for moments, not for hours. But you're here. Prince Jackson has allowed you all to stay, and moreover, would have informed Robert, obviously, that the hotel is partially available. Robert, please tell me you have good news. Uh, well, uh, I have news. I would say it's more of a neutral uh, nature, but uh, we are, as you can see, welcome back. So Welcome back I into the hotel. It is ours now to do with as we wish, as far as I am aware. My eyes immediately cut to Duke. Well, that is good news. I'm not sure what is neutral about that. Well, I learned some other things. I need to speak with Max in private. Uh, with, with me? <laughs> uh, yes. Only question I had was, does this hotel have robes? Because I need to replace mine. Oh, the most luscious of robes, Max. Fair enough. All right, Robert. What do you want to talk about? 
let's go over here, shall we? Oh, Jesus. Oh. As they get up to move, leaving Duke, uh, Sean, and Vera in their own little uh, group for a moment. Sean, are you, is like Sean acting totally fine out of curiosity? Is he like, do you think he would have any, would he, would he say anything? I'm curious. I just don't know where Sean, Sean is in his own character arc of growth right now. I don't know how Sean, what Sean would do after what happened last episode. Uh, I think uh, Sean is possibly uh, a little distracted and thoughtful, but otherwise he is fully present. Nothing suspicious, not suspiciously thoughtful or anything. No, no, he's probably just trying to ignore it. Does he have to, do I need to make a roll like you're trying to actively ignore it? Do you need to like subterfuge roll me? Nah. Our camera would follow Max and Robert off to the side or maybe even to the basement, wherever Robert ends up taking him. Uh, But the two of you find a little bit of privacy to, to speak. Yeah, so let me ask the eternal question. What's the rumpus? Are you familiar with the name Elias Bouchard? Make me a uh, intelligence resolve. Um, composure resolve. Composure resolve. That's correct. Two successes. So <laughs> the name is familiar. You don't know them personally, and you don't really know why that name sounds familiar. Bouchard. Bouchard. Wasn't he, uh, I don't know, the, the premier of Quebec in the 1980s? I don't know. I don't know much about Canadian politics, Robert. Why are you bringing this up? Only you would know that. Well, I found myself in one of his domiciles, and there was a painting of you. Of you! Uh, I think at some point we established that I do have a cell phone because of my alter ego. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I would have taken a picture of it with the cell phone. Absolutely, actually. Yep, that works. Perfectly. I know this is forbidden, but just it's a means to an end. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I don't stand on ceremony with Cam whatnot, so yeah, it's fine. I won't tell nobody. As you uh, grab the flip phone, you pop it open. And while it's a little bit of lower, a lower resolution, what you see before you maybe even st- strikes you and confuses you for a moment. Because you see a painting. One of an individual you were unfamiliar with. The, the uh, supposed Elias Bouchard, you imagine. And next to him, you. At least looks like you, the monstrous figure, the large pointed ears, purple skin, except you wouldn't think it was you if you didn't know it was Gustav. But now you now, but it's in that moment that you realize, oh, that's why I know the name. Elias Bouchard was somebody Gustav used to run with one of his. He wouldn't call it a coterie, but one of his old (laughs) for the sake of listeners, one of his old coterie mates prior to having you and working more of his on his own a Malkavian but that's really all you knew okay well uh, what you got here ain't a picture of me uh, you can chalk this up to uh, what do you call it family resemblance oh this piece of shit is Gustav my sire the late Gustav I imagine some fond memories start springing to mind just for a brief moment the agonizing pain becomes oh. whimsical <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 that piece of shit. Uh, yeah, so, uh, man, that's the weird thing. What kind of, what style of clothing are they wearing in this painting? Uh, for Gustav, he's in a suit. He's, like, perfectly dressed in a suit, not in, like, a robe like you are. Um, well suited to them. And the other individual is wearing, like, a band t-shirt and jeans with socks and no shoes. Yeah. Yeah, that name rings a bell now. He used to, uh, well... Gustav didn't have friends, but uh, I guess you could call him an ally. You can make me one more resolve composure, which I know is not your best. You can, um, you could rouse check two if you wanted to, to add 2d10 to that pool, um, Max. But now that the, the Coterie members, like, are early, like, his pass is coming up, you can give me a quick roll for your memory to see if you remember their names. And I can even give them to you if you do. Wow. Wow. Critical. So holy crap. You crit. Okay. So five successes total. I'm going to give you a bit more than that. Uh, so I'll copy paste names that I've got written down here. So you get them. Oh, let me rouse as well. Sorry. Oh yeah, please do. There you go. Okay. So you don't get hungrier. Uh, so what you remember is uh, the three names of Cassandra Viridian, Victor quote unquote breaker Dragovic and lady Adriana Sinclair, a another Malkavian Cassandra, um, a Bruja breaker and a Ventru, uh, lady Adriana. They are both, two, two of them are around uh, the similar, a little older than you, um, I would say. Uh, one's from the 1920s, one's from the 1880s. But one was turned in the 1960s, a rather late addition to 
his crew, and that was the Bruja. Uh, he was uh, embraced and brought into a circle much later. The one detail you know is that Cassandra Viridian was never uh, was never part of the coterie because she felt like she wanted to be, but because she was a Malkavian who had seen a prophecy where Gustav was supposed to rise to power. Clearly, that did not happen. Um, other than that, uh, if you want any other details, you can ask, and I'll maybe provide if you have any questions, but that's the basics for you. Uh, so Max relays that information, uh, you know, gives all the names and the clans. It's like, uh, yeah, that uh, Brujado, he actually uh, hooked up with Gustav, uh, I think in the 60s, would have been a couple of decades after I broke with him. I didn't find out about him until, shit, when Gustav showed up, burned my haven, I, and that was years after that. Maybe Gustav felt the need for uh, a little bit of muscle, you know? From the looks of things, I don't know, these suits could be the 1920s, maybe? Yeah. That's the thing. I met Gustav in 45 in Berlin. He was torpored in a box that the uh, Thule Society, uh, yeah, bunch of uh, Nazi occultists, essentially. Ugh. Well, I'm not going to bore you with the details of my origin story, but uh, suffice it to say that, yeah, if they was hanging with Gustav, they're probably all as big a piece of shit as he is. Probably looking for the Spear of Destiny or something like that. Yeah, Spear of Destiny, Ark of the Covenant, who knows? Max, Mask, yeah, what? Max, can I admit something to you? Any, and ah, this never gets old, but any time someone says the word bruha. My brain immediately goes to brouhaha. <laughs> yeah, well, they were involved in a few. It never stops. Well, I'm glad we could clear that up. I was a bit concerned, uh, but... So, uh, that's, uh, that's what you were going on a bit about the painting earlier? I was having a little bit of fun. Yeah, well, that whooshing sound uh, you heard was it going straight over my head, but I think I got the skinny now. Imagine that if you were in that painting, maybe it would have sparked something. We could have had a moment. Yeah. Well, I sparked something, all right. <laughs> sparked up Gustav. And now that I think of it, hmm, that might explain, well, somebody taking a shot at me earlier. <laughs> hey, quiet down there, Max Jr. It's okay. We'll get you fed soon. You just see him clawing at your leg and reaching up as it's wowing at you. And, and then Adelaide comes over. She's like, sorry, sorry. Come on, Max. Come here. And she picks up Max and he starts purring and walking and they walk away. There you go, Max Jr. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, probably going to make more sounds like that throughout the evening. <laughs> just so you know. Well, thank you for being so, so uh, forthcoming with me about that. I was a little concerned, but I thought I'd talk to you about it privately first, simply because I knew there would be a... A logical explanation. Yeah, well, we ought to fill the rest of them in, because like I said, things are kind of falling into place. I've been wondering uh, when them particular chickens were going to come. Oh, God damn it. Come home to roost. Uh. As Max grumbles that out, our camera actually can blurs back over to the other three. While they're conversing, do the three of you have any conversation before they rejoin the group and pass along whatever information they do? So... If we have a hotel now, let's go there. Because this place is creepy. Well, Sean, maybe in your age you found a little class. You're right, this place is creepy. I agree, we need to get to the hotel sooner rather than later. Ben-fucking-tastic. Did you have a fruitful evening out and about in Chicago? Your first time on these city streets? Yeah, it was great. You just stumbled upon the perfect druggie for do you oh that was easy you could throw a stone and hit ten of them then well done Sean thank you do you, do you feel it's time maybe we let Sean in on the hotel and all that I think that's fair he's worked hard to come to this far so feel free well, I hope you made good connections in those drug circles. We are going to need them for the hotel. Don't worry, I've got plans. I've got plans on plans. Well, I'm glad to hear it, because you're in charge of the drug ring. Okay. Not me, or Duke. 
just you. I can work with that. I got ideas. You feel an excitement and a confidence, a uh, swell of, of perhaps a swell of ego, Sean. That you're having a hard time knowing if it's yours or not. I can do that. It's fine. Just fine. Well, you know, it's it's drugs and stuff. We've always done that. That's something we've always been good at. And it's something that I've always been good at. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. I'll sort it. I'll sort it for you. I look at Duke. Yeah, can I um can I try to get a, a read here on it? If you want to make a wits insight, you can. But Sean, you are welcome to make an opposed manipulation subterfuge. The difficulty is four. Four is good. Four successes. That's a tie. And the five missy critical. Fear up. You, you, you've, you read it as plain as a fucking a children's book a title on his face, dude. He's lying. And there's a moment where with a messy critical, I would say I'm not. There's really not much here. You could do too much to fuck it up other than maybe just blurt out like you're lying. But I'll leave it in your hands. But no, no. Sean is too eager to uh, too eager to just say yes, too willing to not ask too many questions and is clearly trying not to like instigate more conversation about any of this. Well, since you handled that with quite etiquette, I'll pretend that you're not lying to me, Sean. But it's okay. You'll tell me when you're ready. And if you don't, I'll take it from you when I'm ready. Okay. There is a fear you feel, Sean. A small fear you're not sure is your own. Well done, Sean. And I pat him on the head. And I hate secrets. Shall we go barge in? As, uh, then as, as Vera kind of says that, that's when we'll have Max and Robert kind of come back over and rejoin the Coterie after having some time alone in another room or downstairs, wherever they went. Uh, Max will enter with one of his other time-honored catchphrases. Uh, Vera, we got a problem. Well, it wouldn't be our lives if we didn't have problems, would it? Dare I ask what this one's about? Yeah, uh, yeah. He shows the picture on the flip phone. He hands you a burner phone that obviously belongs to Robert. And as you pull it over, you see the same picture I described to them. The familiar looking Nosferatu that you recognize as Gustav. It's not a very flattering photo was his good side. Why do you have a picture of Gustav? Mm, Yeah, well, he didn't really have a good side per se. But uh, this other prick in the picture with him is a fella named Elias Bouchard. No. I put two and two together, and uh, you remember a little while back, uh, well, just uh, a couple of days ago, you might remember, uh, oh, that little incident with the sniper? Oh, you mean the hole in the wall that was supposed to be your head? Yeah, well, I think I know who might have been trying to put it there. Elias? Well, him or uh, any other number of a couple other pricks... All buddies of Gustav, basically. Ah, uh, I look to Duke, I say, now the shadowy rat figures and the snipers from the rooftop all make a little more sense. Gustav didn't exactly strike me as someone who was well-liked in the community. How could he have allies? Well, I'm not well-liked in the community, and I'd like to say I have allies. While he may not have been super friendly, Gustav always had power. And power can bring in all kinds of friends. Robert, you saw this portrait? I did. I took the photo. Where is it hanging? At Elias Bouchard's... Abandoned theater he was performing at. Not all there, as they say. Oh, who, Elias? (laughs) Quite. Help me understand, why were you after this gentleman? Well, the prince sent me on a little mission. A reminder, in case it's been a couple weeks, um... Basically, the problem was in that area, people were going missing to the point where it was becoming a problem and police started looking into it. And he discovered that a Malkavian was drawing in like kindred and kind of like. And uh, yeah, he asked he asked Robert to handle it for him and handle it. I did. Sometimes brute force is necessary. And by handle, you mean you acquired your asset and gave it back to Jackson. You know, Max, of all the times you said there's a problem, that is probably one of the smaller ones. Um, Except, of course, that Gustav has friends that may be after you. Yeah, and like I say, there's there's more than one of them. Uh, You got a Bruja by the name of Breaker, a bunch of other pricks, like I said, Ventru. Uh, He he gives the rundown of the names and their clans. Sounds like we should find a more secure location. 
They already know we're here. And thanks to Robert's acquiring of the asset, we can go back to the hotel. I say we pack what little we have and we move tonight. Sounds good to me. So Elias Bouchard is a Malkavian. Yep. Cassandra Viridian is... Also a Malkavian. Also a Malkavian. Breaker, Victor Breaker uh, Dragovic is a Bruja, and yep. Lady Adriana is a Ventru. Yep. You say those names out loud, and a couple things come to mind. One, it was it was the end of season one, so uh, or the end of season two, whatever, such a fate. Whenever he killed Gustav, maybe it was season three. Um, but the map that he had laid out about the, the city or different cities and whatnot, you know, if there were, it makes sense if there was more people involved than just Ma- uh, Max. I mean, Gustav, you don't really know who else was involved in that plan. But Sean, does Dragovic sound familiar? That's where you were turned. Dragovic's party. Dragovic's the one that oh, pulled you in. Oh, shit. That name would sound familiar to Sean. Oh, okay. Very specifically. And there would be a moment where you're probably like, that sounds familiar. Can I make a politics roll on any of these? You can make me a politics roll on one of them. So please feel free to make me a politics roll. And whatever you roll, I'll tell you what you learn. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll rouse for it. Okay, well, I got a three. Okay, uh, let's, I'm going to go with, uh, so the one that you'll be able to learn a little bit about and the one that makes the most sense for you to learn a little, a little bit about would be uh, Adriana Sinclair, Lady Adriana Sinclair. Again, 1880s. Um, very specifically, uh, while she doesn't hold like a seat on the council or a uh, princely seat, she is or was known and is a rather well-known rather venture here in Chicago itself. One that holds relative sway within the venture themselves. Um, but she's known to not get her hands dirty all that much. Like what you know of her from your time as Scourge and working heavily with other governments and whatnot is that she just seems like a typical venture on the outside. She doesn't get her hands dirty. You're sure she's probably trying to climb nine different ladders at once and seeing where she ends up on top. But Which would make sense why she was working with Gustav. Yeah, play all your cards. You probably would assume that if Gustav was an, 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 a route to power, then it would likely you should probably use him as like a tool. But even losing a tool can be a hindrance if they were in the middle of trying to do something, which that map then comes to mind. There are a few tools I'm sure we'd all like to lose. <laughs> You think, and just Garrett comes to mind, happy to leave him. Yeah, in the- I was about to, you said it, but I was thinking it. <laughs> He's just in the vault waiting for you guys to come back. Good, he can continue to wait. He's serving purpose. He's cooking. He's marinating. Virgo's Duke, this name here, this this is Vintru. The local to Chicago, I would say influential to some degree. But they don't tend to get their hands dirty, so I wonder why they were working with someone like Gustav. And Dragovic, you know, is New York. Uh, does Sean say anything? Because the, the other, the rest of the coterie did not, would not really recognize the name. He brought him up once or twice, maybe, but yeah. Yeah, there's a moment where Sean looks like he's kind of crashed and stalled, like in his brain, and then he just shouts, Dragovic! I knew a dealer named Dragovic, and he fucked me up once. He, he fucked you up. Do I remember that now? Because that was very hazy for him. You don't remember. So like, like many things, you, yeah, you were pro- probably remember meeting Dragovic, remember being brought in and sat down. And it's when the pills. He fed me a weird drug. I think I died. That, you do know, like, while you don't remember that night, the next time you wake up, you do know you were a thin blood. So, you know, that night it happened. And you remember when father kind of told you, not father, uh, Lars, Larson, Larson. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. Larson, Larson filled in a few of the blanks. Fuck, I think he killed me. Or he helped it. Fuck. Okay, I'm in. Do we? What are we doing about these? Well, it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, if they's in with Gustav and he was in with Father and all that thin blood whatnot. Then- oh, God, it was to do with Father. Yeah. I don't want to be here right now. Well, we are going to evacuate. Collect your things. John, pull the car around. Yes, madam. And John starts shuffling out toward the front door. Duke, I say we get to the hotel, set up some general parameters. We can begin some research on these. We don't need it to be a problem, and we definitely don't need them trying to kill Max. I'm inclined to agree. Does Duke seem lost in thought? Mm, given everything that we've we've sort of dealt with with Larson and the, the drop of Dragovic... New puzzle on board, or at least a new angle to look at. And I think I'd really like to start dipping into some of my newfound abilities, my blood sorcery. So less of a lost in thought, like we've seen him recently of just like, 
couple of frustration and like just trying to figure out what the next step is and like uh, more like Sherlock having a new mystery put in front of him where it's a tantalizing loss in thought. Something the gears are visibly turning for everybody to see. And I say, and Duke, he retrieved your car last night. It's out back. Oh, oh, well, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, John. And John's just sitting in the driver's seat. He can't hear you. He's just sitting there. <laughs> he waves at you. Just wave, wave to him. Uh, you make your way to the back and you all make your way to the hotel. Any other last bits of, of anything you want to say before you all scatter to the uh, winds and head to the hotel? Oh, I will leave a note for Lyle that okay. he can begin his business officially now that we have acquired a hotel. Yeah, now that you're here, he can finally set up shop properly and continue the job that you've tasked him with doing, obviously. Um, what was it? Do you have a name for the hotel that you were going to? It's completely evaded my thought right this moment. Uh, I think out of game, I don't remember. In game, he's hyper fixated on on something. I would say uh, as you all pile into the cars and you all drive your separate ways, the last shot we see is the towering, gorgeously well-kept building with the yellow and, and pristine lights of a hotel. And as our camera circles around the building, just as we're about to see the name of the hotel at the very top, we can cut to black and we'll be back next week, everybody. Thank you so much. Goodbye.